Half a day, Jan Tiro, Manyaluhu, Asesa Christo. As I read the gospel this Sunday, I reminded me of our own culture here in the Marianas. At a wedding party, or what we call a fandango, there's also very special seating is set up for, of course, the uh, wedding couple, which is usually at the center stage. And then there are separate tables on either side where the parents, godparents, along with honored guests are, are seated. One on each side, one for the groom and one for the, uh, the bride's family. The special guests for each side are usually individuals of distinct positions in the community. The governor, the lieutenant governor, legislators or judges. Sometimes it became a spectacle of which family had the bigger influence in the community. It may have been intimidating just for anyone to sit at the table with so many people who were considered to be such with such high stature. Jesus, in a similar situation as he is invited to dine with the Pharisees and the scribes today, the Pharisees and the scribes are always looking to trip him up and just watching Jesus' every action. But Jesus is also watching and noticing how the guests were scrambling to be seated at the places of honor. In the time of Jesus, it was also customary, just like our Fandongo, that those regarded in high honor would be seated closest to the hosts of the party and those which had lower positions in the community would be seated much further away. At first glance, as you hear the gospel, or as you hear the gospel, your first thought may be that Jesus is just offering good advice through the parable to avoid embarrassment at a dinner or a party. We can imagine how humiliating it would be to sit at a table setting and then have the host come over for us to move so that someone else can sit in our place whom we thought was beneath us. The message of Jesus' parable was not only meant to warn the guests against wanting to seek the higher seat of honor to avoid embarrassment, but brings more importantly to light the lack of humility in their hearts. We are reminded that in our baptism, we have been called to live a life of humility, most especially in our relationship with each other. In the letter of the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 5, verse 5, it says, Therefore, in your relations with one another, clothe yourselves with humility, because God is stern to the arrogant, but to the humble he shows kindness. Humility provides us the foundation of all the other virtues as it allows us to see ourselves through the eyes of God and realize our true selves. To not see ourselves any greater or any less than what we truly are and provide us the freedom to love others selfishly. When pride reigns in our hearts, we are not able to love unconditionally as we judge others through the eyes of the world based on the amount of money they make, their positions in the government or organizations, or their circle of friends. Our Lord, the greatest example of humility, as He came down into the world to be born as one of His own creatures, and as a slave obedient unto death on the cross, that we could have life. It is in our humbleness that we come to the table of the Lord's banquet, where we are all seated as equal children of God, where there is no classification of color, race, or religion, where there is no pecking order based on our occupation 
or our education or the amount of money in our bank account. It will not matter that we are homeless or that we are despised in our community. The only thing which will matter is how much we have been able to love without the need to get anything in return. As we come together this Sunday to share in the banquet of the Eucharist, let us pray that in humility, we allow the grace of our Lord to reveal to us the true person that we are. And through His most precious body and blood, that we be transformed into a life of humbleness that, that heals us from the pride that keeps us from living in truth and love. Have a blessed weekend. Si Joseph and Benindisi, God bless.